I wanted to make sure you understood that we have the votes uh, once the impeachment trial has begun to pass a resolution essentially the same, very similar to the 100 to nothing vote in the Clinton uh, trial, which sets up, as you may recall, what could best be described as a, maybe a phase one, which would include, obviously, the arguments from the prosecution, arguments from the defense, and then a period of written questions. Because remember, speak, uh, senators are not allowed to speak. Who ever heard of a trial without witnesses and documents? It's unprecedented. But if you're afraid of the facts, if you're afraid of what would come out, if you want to cover it up, even in something as weighty and serious as impeachment, you say no witnesses and no documents. By not sending the articles immediately, she's already accomplished two things which we fully support. One, Mitch McConnell couldn't do what some thought he might want to do, right before Christmas or after Christmas, just dismiss. And second, in the last two weeks, there's been a cascade of evidence that bolsters the case, strongly bolsters the case for witnesses and documents. They refused to treat President Trump the same way we treated President Clinton. What was good enough for President Clinton in an impeachment trial should have been good enough for President Trump. And all we're doing here is saying we're going to get started in exactly the same way that 100 senators agreed to <clears throat> 20 years ago. What's good for President Clinton is good for President Trump. We'll get around to the discussion of witnesses. We got around to the discussion of witnesses after we got through phase one 20 years ago. We are telling our Republican colleagues, you can run, but you can't hide. There will be votes on the four witnesses that we have asked for. There will be votes on the three sets of documents that we have requested. And there may be votes on other witnesses and documents as well. This President's foreign policy, I describe it in two words, erratic and just wrong. He's, he's erratic and he's impulsive. I describe it in two words, erratic and impulsive. And as Joe Lieberman pointed out in the Wall Street Journal yesterday, where's the applause? Where is the applause? on the other side for the demise of one of the most heinous killers who ever stalked the earth. This guy was the worst of the worst. Where is the bipartisan applause for eliminating this threat?